Now there are some times when I'm making content on the fly and I don't want to bring a full monitor with me and I actually would kind of just use my phone as a film monitor but there wasn't a lot of great options out there. Now something that's a little bit more unexpected while using a phone as a more filmmaking tool is using it as a monitor but not just a monitor but also turning this kind of into an Atomos Ninja 5. Today's video, we're going to be talking about the Atomos Ninja Phone. On launch day, I pretty much begged the Atomos team in order for me to cover this tool because I did think it was going to be super useful for not only an external monitor, but also a lot of the camera to cloud and online services that you can use while using your iPhone as a filmmaking and video production tool. Now, at the time of when it launched, it had a couple features that needed to be improved, but they actually made those improvements in a really big way. And I want to showcase those today in case you guys want to use your phone as a filmmaking tool in your production. But, well, we'll get there. Oh, also, just so we're on the same page, Atomos is the sponsor of this video. So for the most part, this is going to be more of a showcase of what the Atomos Ninja Phone can do, and you can draw your own conclusions if it fits into your workflow, but we'll just get into the rest of the video. Now, first things first, I'm an Apple fanboy, so as far as my knowledge is in terms of iOS devices, you can use your iPhone 16, 15, 15 Pro Max, 15 Plus, pretty much any of your iPhones that have the USB-C connection, and you can use an iPad 11-inch or 13-inch if you do put on an expansion unit that you can get for the Atomos Ninja Phone. All right, so doing top-downs are super 2023, so we're going to kind of do this full frontal. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to have our iPhone 16 or 15 fixed into here, and you can use these little screws in order to loosen that bottom plate to make sure that things are adjusted nice and snug on your phone. Okay, once these guys are in, we're gonna flip the sky over to the back. Now, what you're gonna notice here is this is gonna take an MPF battery. So if you have any of the Sony MPFs, you can use them on here. I'm going to use my small rig battery. We did a video on this guy a little while ago. And that's going to go on the back here. And that's not only going to be able to power up the Atomos Ninja phone in general, but once I have this connected, I'm going to be able to charge my phone as well. So if you're worried about your phone dying, doesn't happen here because this battery is going to charge both of these devices. Now, I'm going to make sure that this guy is turned on by just holding on to that on button. Takes a little bit, but this turns red. It'll flash a little bit. Now it flashes green, yellow, because probably this battery is at like 12% or something like that. Yeah, it's at 12%. Now what's nice about this is that the Atomos Ninja phone does have a locking USB-C cable. Now you can get a locking HDMI, but I don't have that one. So I'm gonna use this guy. Now this is kind of what your package is gonna look like while it's on your phone. I've turned my guy back on and uh, I'll show you what the app looks like in a little bit, but this is a pretty small package. Now the cold shoe up here that I mentioned before, I'm just gonna show you this up here. I could put on my DJI mic right on the top. And that's gonna be pretty much the rigged out package. So audio is gonna go onto here. There is an accessory USB-C cable that you can use to plug in. Super simple to do. And what's nice that this will also charge my DJI Mic 2 receiver. This is gonna go on my phone similar to how a monitor would. And on the bottom here, I'm just gonna put my HDMI cable in right now and make it easier to put it on the FX3. Now, the added bonus for this guy is that you can record up to 4K, 30 frames a second in 10-bit to the Atomos Ninja phone, which is actually just going to end up being your own phone's memory, especially if you want to get some external recording, you want to shoot in ProRes, or you want to simultaneously deliver proxies because you can do that at the same time. Now, the Atomos Ninja phone has a lot of the same settings that you would use if you're using a Shinobi or an Atomos Ninja 5. For one, this one is going to be your focus peaking. Now, if you press and hold some of the options, you're able to actually change some of the parameters. So, for example, if I want to have low peaking, maybe I want to have it nice and bright, I'm going to put it back to medium, and you can change the color as well. You can flip the monitor if you'd like to. You can also turn the sky on and off as you please, just like you can on the other monitors. If you want to have a waveform under here, which if I just click off of this, you'll be able to see that. You have your grids that are on here as well. And if you press and hold, you could change which kind of grid lines you want. If you want to have them portrait, you want to have them square. If you want to have them thicker or thinner, you can change all the parameters in terms of that without having to go into a big complicated menu. You can change if you want to go into your false color, which is super nice. You can also change what kind of false color that you want to have as well if you want to go black and white. You can also change your anamorphic D-squeeze. This toggles it on and off, but if I press and hold, I can choose which D-squeeze I'm going to be using. Now, at the time of this video, my Blazar Remus lenses haven't come in yet, but if I want to put this on 1.5 and I want to toggle it on or I want to toggle it off, I can do that at the touch of a button without having to fish through menus, which is super nice. And also, the FX3 doesn't have anamorphic support, so getting it on your phone is kind of nice. You also have some aspect ratio lines that you can do on here, depending on how you use it. I made a whole video on doing that on the Atomos, but um, you can do that as well. Zebras are gonna be nice on here. 
press and hold. You could also set where your zebras are and you could set the colors of where these zebras are as well. And I also get my audio levels on here as well. So right now my phone is picking stuff up from the speaker, mostly because I don't have anything connected to this guy just yet. But as you're seeing me talking and yapping back and forth, I got my levels on here. And lastly, you could put on your time code as well. So if you do have time code, you're maybe doing a multi-cam situation, you're able to toggle this guy on and off. And you could change some of the options on your monitor through this menu setting as well. You can do that all in this menu setting over here. Okay, so this location kind of has nothing to do with the Atomos Ninja phone, but let me know if you like it. I have a couple of videos I'm gonna do here in the future. A couple of weeks ago, I did have a client gig and it was just my regular retainer run at the mill stuff. But one of the things was, was my client was actually sick. So we had to do this a little bit more remote. Using a camera to cloud, especially through Atomos Edit, is a nice way to upload footage in real time while you're recording at the same time on your phone. Now, in terms of that external recording, you can record an HDR 10-bit file, but one of the things that were recommended was that you shot HLG on your camera and knowing myself and my love for s log 3 especially my fx3 where i do my client work on i, I wasn't going to do that now there's a couple of different comparisons i'm going to put up here and obviously this location is not the location i was doing my client project in but one thing that i tried to do was shoot an s log 3 internal to my camera while still exporting an hdr clip external recording to my phone i airdropped it one on davinci resolve and i try to grade them both and the results are actually pretty decent now you have to keep in mind that if you are using s log 3 it's going to reflect that image on your phone if you're using it as a monitor. So you have to be prepared to see that kind of gray style, desaturated, decontrasted image. But at the same time, once it's graded, it actually works out pretty well. This is also really nice because if I want to send clips to a client that might not be there on the day, they actually get to see exactly what my camera sees. Now, hold up for a second. You might be thinking, well, getting ProRes files is all fine and dandy, but I might not have enough space on my phone in order for me to have clips directly go from the Atomos Ninja phone into my phone so I can edit it and eventually post. Not everybody has the highest capacity on their iPhone. Well, there's actually a really cool thing on the Atomos Ninja phone as well. Now, I found out that if you do turn off some of your cloud recording settings, you actually can go into the menu and you can choose to use either H.264, HEVC, or H.265 as well. These are a little bit more compressed. They're much smaller size, but they'll still give you that 10-bit flexibility in order for you to color grade or just have a wider color space, whether you want to do that on your computer or on your phone, and especially for content creators, you want to post something on the fly. Even a ProRes HQ422, the files are going to be a little bit too big. It's a little bit easier for me to use an H.264. I can either bake the look in or I could kind of manipulate it myself, but it's a lot more manageable of a file that's going to go direct to a social media platform. Yeah, his priorities are not to his kidneys. <laughs> yeah. uh, as a friend, bro, drink some water. Uh... My now, because the Atomos Ninja phone uses your phone's data signal, you're actually able to live stream while using your camera's live streaming device, but you can do it from anywhere in a very small package. And the steps are pretty easy. Okay, so I have my Sony FX3 here set up with the Ninja phone. I'm gonna go over to this cloud button right over here. Right now, it's set up to shoot things to the cloud, but when I go to change services, you're gonna get the option to be able to use Facebook Live, YouTube Live, Twitch, or a custom RTMP. If I go onto YouTube Live, I can put my own description in there, put in my server, have my stream key, and I could also choose the quality as well. I'm gonna put this onto high quality. Now, I'm not gonna show you all my stream key stuff so you guys don't hack my account, but if you're watching this video, you've probably seen a live already. But this is an easy way to set things up and you'll be able to start streaming using the Atomos Ninja phone and your camera right away. I also want to add this part in as well. If you're someone that shoots a lot of vertical content, the Atmos Ninja phone also has the ability to help you live stream in vertical as well because the menu and all of its systems actually changes over so it fits that form factor as well. So if you're somebody that likes to make vertical content, get it directly onto your phone and edit it right away, this is actually a great option, especially for you guys that do talking head videos. Now, when the Atomos Ninja phone first came out, there was a couple of points of contention and things that could be improved on this device to make it a lot more viable. For one, it only recorded in 1080p on launch, which is fixed because now it does 4K up to 30 frames a second. And you could also record up to 4K 30 frames a second on your phone and in ProRes, so there is quite a bump and an upgrade on there in terms of the quality. That being said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, or at the very least, you enjoyed me rambling about this device that honestly didn't know that was going to come out, but I'm really glad that it did. The YouTube algorithm probably thinks you want to watch a video over there. There. So you may as well do that and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.